How's it going? I'm Tobin in the den today to kick off my brush review series. I've been spending months, a long time really, trying to figure out a way that I wanted to enumerate subjectively a brush review. After a lot of overthinking, I've settled on a system. I might put some tweaks on it. This first video will be a little bit longer than the subsequent subsequent videos in the series, uh, just because it'll be taking a little bit of time to explain the program or the, the method of my madness. Three categories broken down into two segments, and then two final things that we'll talk about. Let's get into this. Frank's G8. I have several G5s, a few G7s, and one G4. Frank's G8 has the most, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, Tobin. Stick with the formula. Stick with your program. All right. So, <laughs> how you doing? I'm Tobin. Yeah. What I want to talk about first is that this brush, in case you missed it, was sent to me for review from Pete. This is going to be one of the few exceptions to what I currently have planned. It's in the new handle. I believe this one's called the Longhorn. Pete has kicked off a whole new line of brushes. It's like nine different handles, something like that. I'll be putting it up here plus links in the description. While I this was for free, I will not profit from the sale of anything on Hendrix Classics & Co. whatsoever. So got that out of the way right. Did not pay for this, but I will not profit from the sale of it. This is available in two different handles. We'll talk about that more as we go forward with my brush series. So let's just get back to, to the matter at hand. Reviewing Frank's G8. In the description will be a video where you can see me lather it. I'm not gonna be doing any lathering in these brush review videos. We'll just get right into it, get you know down and, down and dirty, and just give you guys my subjective opinion enumerated opinion on these brushes. I have over 70 brushes since I have over 70 synthetic brushes now in the den. The G8 first category is overall softness. Let's talk about the softness of the tips and the softness of the face feel. So the tips is exactly that, just the tip baby. That's all we're talking about. It's just the tip. The tips I thought back and forth and again I will discuss this in future videos. I thought back and forth about whether or not I want to talk about having like scritchy or pokey, right? Or scratchy uh, as a category. But I really feel like that the softness of the tips category alone will cover it. So five for all these things will be average. My barometer for average will be two of the oldest types of synthetics that I've been using. One will be Poisson types. And then the high brush types commonly found in Omega brushes, but a lot of people, you know, have cover, uh, have copied the Poisson and the high brush. And for me, that's kind of like a, a long standing standard in the wet shaving community is Poisson types and then the high brush type fibers. So this is kind of like what th these two right here, these two types of fibers are what I'll be kind of using as a barometer for an overall basis, but at the same time, everything that I've ever owned being factored into it as well, okay? So scritchy, you, excuse me, scritchy, you normally only find that in natural fibers. And for the most part, you really don't find that in, in modern synthetics. There's some nylon, you know, older tech, right? So I decided just with soft tips. 10 would be like the softest tip I've ever experienced. Five would be the average, right? And then as you start going down from five, one would be like, it's not soft, it's scritchy or something like that. And in those, kind of, in, in that, in those instances is when I talk about that. The Frank's G8, I've given it a six for the softness of the tips. And that is just simply this. The second segment in that first category is the softness of the face feel. So once you get it splayed, how soft does the in, how soft is the interior of the bristles on the face? For that, I've given it a five. It is very average with softness. Backbone. This is where Frank's G8 really stands out. 
The second category, we have backbone and ease of splay. I believe that all synthetics can splay. The backbone is a nine. Um, I can't think of any synthetic I've ever used that has more backbone than this. And really, even when compared with a lot of my badgers, or, or my, um, my boar, excuse me, this is a backbone monster. In fact, Pete is calling it the G8 Max backbone. I'm not really comfortable yet giving anything a 10. I almost gave this a 10 in backbone, but I decided on a nine. So backbone, ease of splay. So ease of splay would be how much pressure is having to be applied. This guy would be like a nine or a 10. He's very soft and easy to splay. This is not easy to splay. It requires a good amount of pressure. And then also in that, I'm factoring in the springiness. So when you get up against the skin, does it spring back on you? You know, and how much pressure you're having to push into it. So for overall backbone, I've given it a nine. And when it comes to ease of splay, I'm giving it a three. Our next category, we have flow through and retention. Flow through is how easily the water and soap flows through the fibers. And then retention is basically the opposite, how well it actually holds on to it. But there's kind of a, a balance in my opinion. All this is subjective. Your opinions may you know totally differ on what on how I'm going to be doing this, but I've given a lot of thought and this is how I feel with all of this. So flow through, I've given it a four, five being average, a 10 being like, you know, and I'm, again, I'm not comfortable giving anything a 10, but a 10 would be like, it just, you know, flows right through it without any resistance. The lower you go, the more resistance there is. So flow through on this, I feel is a little less than average and I've given it a four. So there is some flow and some movement, just a little less than average retention. I'm giving it a seven. And with this, with all of these, something I've been doing and it's been fun. Uh, I've done this with a lot of brushes so far. I go into the bathroom, I whip up a lather and I do everything measured to where I'm doing what I call the Matthew method. I'm doing his little scoop of, what is it? A quarter, quarter of a teaspoon, one milliliter. And then I whip it up to a, a yogurty consistency. And then I kneel, yeah, I kneel uh, in front of the bathtub. And I start just by doing this. And plus, you know, the whole time too, with this retention, I'm, I'm also factoring in how the retention feels as I've used it, right? And with all of these, it's gonna be like a minimum of 10 times, otherwise I'm not even gonna give you my full review. And so I start just you know, shaking it kind of gently, and then I continue to speed up and, you know, increase until I feel like I've gotten everything out of it that I can possibly get out of it. And so I'm using that as a way of helping me gauge a number. And with this, I'm giving it a seven. So flow through a four and retention is seven. And I do believe that you can you can have your, your cake and eat it too, that there can be a difference between flow through and retention. I'm not measuring um, heat. I don't have, you know, like a laser thermometer or anything like that. Next, dry time. Does it dry in 12 hours or less? The way I see it is a lot of guys will shave in the morning. So if you leave it upside down, go to work and come home, can you put it away, you know, after you get home from work? Or for me, in a nighttime shaver, I shave after, you know, usually after dinner, hang it upside down, wake up in the morning, and I want to put it away. So 12 hours is what I've decided should be like the most that it takes a synthetic to dry. And yes, this one dries within 12 hours. In fact, it's closer to around 10 or nine value. So this is overall value. Judging by the standards of the price, when I record this video, it's March 24. This brush is selling for $30 and 49 cents as is. He has it in another handle, the same knot. You can also buy the knots separately. So 
$30.49 is what this would cost you, the Longhorn handle and the G8 knot. If you buy just the GE, G8 knot by itself, you can get a bulb or a fan, same price, 26 millimeter for $15.97. So $30.49 or $15.97. Again, I didn't pay for it, but do I feel that this is a value at $30 and, and 49 cents. And if so, five being average, 10 being a great deal, one being a not great deal, I give it a seven. This is an above average value. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck. It's hard to even find a T3 or a T2 for around, you know, they're selling for around 30 bucks these days. And so overall market, a synthetics on the market and competing prices. That's what I'll be gauging it off of as we move along. I give this a seven. Yes, it's a great value. It's an above average value. 10 being it's a steal. Five being they're ripping you off and you're paying too much. Five being your average value. So seven is a good value. I highly recommend this brush, especially if you're looking for something with backbone. And unless you already have a G8, I think, and unless you have something like set super deep, right? Like, cause that's one of the things I'm not going to go into cause I'll be taking up even more time in 11 and a half minutes in the future. I want these videos to only take five or seven minutes, but you know, you can always change how you have it set. You know, like this one here, this G5 is set kind of shallow. It's not in there very deep. So while the knot has backbone, it doesn't have quite as much backbone well, maybe it does, but anyways, if you know how if you if you know how setting the knot works, the lower you set it down into the handle, the more backbone it'll give it because it's it's compressing the fibers together and not allowing them to open up. It's not allowing them to bloom. Versus if you have them up higher, they will bloom out more. So I'm very confident in saying that if you have set your brush at a reasonable depth that you will not have anything in your den that offers as much backbone as this and that it's going to give your bore and everything a run for its money it feels great on the face i love the handles that he has if you check out all the different handles because you, you know you could have this knot set in the i think it's eight or nine different handles he has now so we're now approaching the 13 minute mark, which is much less like twice the, the length that I want these videos to be. I want to again, thank Pete for sending this to me for review. Frank, well done, my friend. This is definitely, uh, I think even a step up from the G7 guys who like the properties of the G7 will find that in this. But if you love the G7, but one of the things you like about it is displayability you might not be crazy about the g8 um just because it is max backbone you know that's what when pete is calling it is max backbone but the face feel the way that the fibers overall work if you like the g7 you'll probably like this too unless you don't like a lot of backbone so how did i do what do you guys think give it to me raw and real remember this was all subjective if you're still watching um, so, you know, of course we're going to have differences of, of opinion, but I also want to hear your differences of opinion. And, uh, yeah. Do you have a G8? Only place I know of really to find one here in the States is Pete and, uh, check out Pete's stuff. I'm going to continue to ramble. I don't know how to stop. Stop me. Stop me now. Take care guys. And remember, there's a little big things. Like remembering, this is a subjective review. Take care.